What's going on everyone? Darkside Phil here with a special video and I'm going to be completely and blatantly open and honest in this video. This is going to be kind of a rant, so prepare yourself. Uh, and I know it's going to be controversial, people are going to say, oh, blah, 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 whatever, we'll get to that. But I'm fucking upset, alright? And to the point where actually <sighs> I I'm torn... Because what we're going to talk about is, is regarding a company that I grew up with that was one of my f absolute favorite video game developers. They were kind of like the do-no-wrong company. Like, everything they put out was pretty much gold. Um, and so you knew when you were spending your well-earned money on something from this company that you were going to get a bang for your buck and that basically your business was appreciated. It's kind of like... Uh, a relationship that goes hand in hand. I'm going to give you my money, and you're going to continuously give me a quality product, okay? And it's like, okay, does it really mean that, that Capcom is super appreciative of everything that you do with them? I don't know, but that's kind of like how I thought about it in my head. Gee, I'm going to continuously give you my money to buy your games. You're going to continuously pump out great content for me. Um, to the point where I've probably spent you know, thinking about it, more money playing games that were developed by Capcom in my lifetime than any other company, when you figure out that actually Capcom developed every single Street Fighter game, and I've played those for so goddamn long, okay? Um, so what we're going to talk about today, and the reason that I'm ranting is because, as you know, there's been all this controversy over the past year, pretty much, regarding Capcom, regarding the fact that Capcom, at this point, is releasing games way too early when you're talking about uh, you know Super Street Fighter 4 which has had Street Fighter 4 Super Street Fighter 4 Super Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition and then Super Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition with a patch that completely changed the balance of the game within a course of what three to four years they had Marvel vs. Capcom 3 released in February of 2011 and then Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 released in November of 2011 completely making Marvel vs. Capcom 3 obsolete and a complete waste of money okay completely screwing people who don't want to buy the same game twice in the same year for just a, a handful of new characters and gameplay tweaks. Um, and now, this year, the big controversy with Capcom has been DLCs on disc DLCs, the fact that Capcom sells you a game like Street Fighter Cross Tekken, like Dragon's Dogma, where you paid $60 for the game, and so you're playing the game, but then that Capcom decides to release additional, what they call DLC content, for content that's actually already on the disc, but you have to pay extra for it. In the case of Street Fighter Cross Tekken, a, a massive amount of additional characters that are already pretty much on the game, ready to be played with, which people have proven because they've hacked the game and played with these characters, and there's video evidence of it, but you can't play with them on day one. You have to wait till later this year, and you have to pay money and then you can play with these characters. The same thing with Dragon's Dogma. There were something like a hundred additional missions on the disc where Capcom said, well, we're going to over time release these and if you want to play them, you can pay us for them. And it's like, but this is content that you, were, you developed during the course of the development of the actual retail game. This isn't something that you developed later on and you're releasing through a downloadable service. This is something that you've been planned to be part of the game and then decided, oh, we're going to make people charge for it at a later date. And not to say that Capcom is the only company doing this. There are other companies that have been doing it as well. But they are, at this point, by far the worst offender. They've done it more than anyone else. Street Fighter Cross Tekken pretty much was the, 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 the last straw where people said, that's it, we're done. And sales numbers proved it. Street Fighter Cross Tekken sold horribly, okay? In a competitive setting, the game is completely panned. People don't want to play the game in a competitive setting because of all the bullshit. And basically, Capcom looks like shit this year. And it pains me to come out and have to talk and rant about this subject this week in particular, because this week is EVO week. I mean, you know, you've got the National Fighting Game Tournament that's happening. This, I believe it's this weekend. I think that's what everyone's been saying. You know, it's the, oh, the people say, oh, the countdown to Vegas or whatever. And this is the week where primarily Capcom gets its biggest push because Street Fighter, Ultimate Marvel 3, Street Fighter Cross Tech, all these games are going to be getting played at EVO. So you're going to be seeing all over the internet, that's all you're going to hear about how this, these games are being played competitively. And 
if you really want my opinion, I don't think they deserve it this year. You know what I mean? Like, they are just betraying their customer base. They are basically screwing people out of money, okay? And the problem is, I don't think, obviously when you say things like Capcom, oh, it's, that's an overgeneralization. No, it's not all of Capcom. Probably the people who develop the games are well-intentioned. The people who develop the games are the people who I would, here's my money, take it. Please go and spend it and enjoy and have a good life, you know, and continue to be employed. Those are the people I want to give my money to. Who I don't want to give my money to is the other half of the company, the management base. You can tell there's certain management right now within Capcom who don't understand video games, don't understand the culture, the customer base, don't understand the economy, and all they want to do is milk the fucking customer for more money. They don't care about if it hinders the gameplay, they don't care if it hinders any, you know, anything about the quality of the game, all they care about is taking your fucking money. And I'm tired of that bullshit, alright? That management structure that's within Capcom now needs to be released, release them out into the wild, let them go fend for themselves in, in a horrible economy and try to find other jobs, and let people who actually care about quality games and making money through quality go into the management structure of Capcom. So the reason I'm really bringing this up today, because <clears throat> for me, something that I found out late last night, or actually I would say early this morning, is the straw that broke the camel's back for me. And I've always been the kind of guy that, all right, I see both sides of the argument, and I do, I see both sides. I can understand that Capcom's trying to make a continuous revenue stream from their games. And there is something to be said about continuous revenue streams. A game like World of Warcraft, where you can continuously play this game, they're continuously patching and updating the content, there's going to be you know, new content all the time, and you pay a subscription-based payment structure to play that game, look at how successful World of Warcraft is. The difference here is, they're continuously updating, patching, and, and, and making sure that your gameplay experience is great, okay? Capcom isn't doing that. What Capcom's done is they've created content beforehand, and they're charging you additional money for content you already have on your goddamn disc, okay? It's ridiculous. It would be like if World of Warcraft charged you $60, and then every they kept charging you the subscription so that the, the, the gameplay that you had, the game that you had from day one on the disc a decade ago when the game came out, starts to unlock over time. No, they're on the fly, they're developing new things, and as a reward for that constant development, that constant release of new content, you're paying the subscription-based fee. That's not what Capcom's doing, and that's why people are so up in arms. This is bullshit. Um, so the straw that broke the camel's back, which a lot of you know if you follow me on Twitter and Facebook already, is this. And yes, it looks like shit. It's because I was so fucking angry last night that I crumpled it into a tiny little ball and threw it across my goddamn condo. What this is, is the back of the instruction manual of Dragon's Dogma. It's the last page. And what you have on here, which I can now turn around and show you because it doesn't matter because I've already redeemed the code, is the, the Resident Evil 6 download code for Xbox 360. Now for those of you who aren't familiar with how this was going to work, basically if you purchased Dragon's Dogma, you got this code. And as of today, July 3rd, you were supposed to be able to enter that code on Xbox Live and download the Resident Evil 6 demo and play the Resident Evil 6 demo. Now from what I've heard, this is the exact same demo that they, I've already played at E3. So for me, in particular, is it super upsetting that I don't get to play it? No, because I've already played it. I played through the entire Chris Redfield campaign. I played through the, the uh, I think his name's Jake, forgive me if I'm wrong, but you know he's a new character and I, I don't remember, it's not ingrained in my head, but I played through his campaign. I did not get to play the Leon Kennedy campaign, but John Rambo didn't, he already told me about it. We've already discussed this demo, you know, back in early June. So for me, I've already played this a month ago, so it's not like I'm missing out and I feel, oh, I'm horrible, that everyone else gets to play it and I don't, okay? But you might be saying, wait a minute, Phil, why don't you get to play it? You have the code right here, you know, you bought Dragon's Dogma. What's the deal? Well, here's the thing. And yeah, I know people are going to say it's my fault, and it's not just me, by the way. Thousands of people woke up this morning to this startling realization. But if you read the fine print, and boy, do I mean fine fucking print, Look how small the text is. Um, you can, I'm sure you probably the camera's not focusing. I'm actually curious to see if it is. This text is fucking microscopic, okay? You can't read it. So you have to fucking basically squint and start reading the hundred paragraphs of fine print. And it actually says here, one, two, three, 
four to five sentences into this paragraph of information, okay? Here's this sentence. The Resident Evil 6 demo will be available to download by running the Dragon's Dogma disc on Xbox 360 with your Xbox Live account signed in after July 3rd, 2012. Fuck you, Capcom. What the fuck? Now let's just talk about how fucked up this situation is. Number one, there are people that ran out and bought Dragon's Dogma because they're hardcore fans of Resident Evil and they heard that the demo was going to be available if you bought this on the Xbox 360, okay? Number two, you physically need the disc to play this demo, okay? Now, there, this is not the first time this has been done. If you remember, when you bought Halo ODST, you got the beta to Halo Reach. That's a, actually a major reason why a lot of people played and bought Halo ODST, besides the fact that it was this fucking shit-ass short piece of shit game that wasn't worth $60. One of the worst fucking games for $60 ever made and completely ripped off the customer, and the mainstream media hid that fact that year because they all got paid off by Microsoft. But I digress. That was the same situation. You need, still needed the disc in order to play the beta. Similarly, there was Bulletstorm, where Bulletstorm, you, if you kept the disc, a couple months later you could play the Gears of War 3 online beta, multiplayer beta, okay? Here's the difference between those games and this game. They were made publicly available. It was listed on like every gaming news website. Everyone knew it was made in press releases from those companies. They made it clear that you still need the game disc to play those demos slash betas. In this case, the only way you would fucking know that you still need the Dragon's Dogma game disc is to read the microscopic fucking print listed here on the fucking sheet with the code and no, I'm sorry to say, I'm not the kind of OCD person that when I get something like this, I don't read every fucking line of fine print. In fact, I'll be honest with you, I did read this, and I didn't even notice that. Because I read that it says, okay, you got to enter it, you got to download it, blah, blah, blah. I never actually noticed that it said, you still need the game disc. Now, here's the thing, all right? Dragon's Dogma, when it came out, people were saying, on the Xbox 360, it runs better if you install the game. I actually have the entire game of Dragon's Dogma installed on my Xbox 360 hard drive right now. I still can't access the fucking Resident Evil 6 demo, okay? It's bullshit. What this is is a tactic by Capcom to attempt to have you keep the Dragon's Dogma game disc for two reasons. Number one, so you don't trade the game in so that it can be resold on the second-hand market, which basically Capcom feels takes away from their sales because that's another person that's not buying the game new. And number two, so that you continue, you continuously keep this game disc, so hopefully you'll buy those fucking DLCs that are on the game disc to begin with that they're systematically releasing every couple weeks. Uh, which is complete and, on, and uh, honestly, it's bullshit. You should have that content because it's on the fucking game disc already. And the thing that infuriates me the most about this whole situation is that the demo is not on the disc. I could say, oh, all right, this is a benefit to the consumer because the demo is already on the disc. So because we did it this way, you don't have to download the demo. You could just play it right away if you have the code. Wrong! You still have to download the demo. It's not on the disc. All this is, all that this code is, is a 100 kilobyte token to unlock permission so that when you boot your Dragon's Dogma disc, you can initiate the download. There's zero fucking benefit to any customer to do a demo this way. This is 100% greed by Capcom. It's a shady business practice. It's fucking bullshit. And I usually don't rant on about stuff like this. Like I said, I can see both sides of the fence. I can understand in some cases why Capcom does it. There's, I see no benefit whatsoever to doing a demo like this. Now the other, th the thing is, the, apparently the demo will be made public in September. So I'll be honest with everyone, in September, I'll play the demo. And I'm not trying to say, this is the sad part, I'm not trying to say don't buy Capcom games, because I'm going to tell you, Resident Evil 6, I've played the demo. I thought it was good. I enjoyed it a lot. I think that Resident Evil 6 is going to be one of the best games this year. And it's a shame, because you have such a dichotomy with this company. You've got game developers that are making good or great games, like... Resident Evil 6, like Dragon's Dogma. That game's actually really good. I liked it. I gave it a pretty decent rating when I rated it this year. 
And I think that, unfortunately, Capcom's getting a lot of shit because of the shady business practices of the management structure of the company rather than the game developer. The game developers themselves are doing great jobs. They're putting out quality games. I played... Resident Evil 6, I played Lost Planet 3 at E3, I liked them both, and I saw gameplay of Devil May Cry 3, and that looks good too. So I think the games that Capcom are putting out and that they're developing right now are good, but the management is fucking the company into its grave, okay? And it sucks because I'm so torn. I definitely am going to buy Resident Evil 6. I've played the demo and I enjoyed it. John Rambo and I both liked it, we want to play that game in co-op. But... They're probably going to fuck us somehow, you know? I just know it's coming. Here comes the, the managerial fucking. Here comes the, the giant King Kong Capcom dildo that's going to get shoved up the fucking customer's ass because we bought one of their games. And I'm just so fucking... I, I've had it. I'm on my wit's end with this company. And, uh, you know, I, I usually don't agree with other... Or, or, or blatantly call out other people or agree, say that I agree with them. But I'm going to tell you, one of the people who's been the major proponents of this anti-Capcom campaign because of the on this DLC, the shady business practices, is Angry Joe. I'm going to tell you something, Joe. I now agree with you 100%. I'm fucking tired of this company fucking people Oh, Like, literally, <laughs> you want to get off the cock? You better give us some more money. It's like, come on, man. This is fucking retarded. What fucking possible benefit? Name one benefit to the customer of having the demo like this. There's none. Now here's the other thing. People are like, oh Phil, well this isn't a big deal. Run out to your local, you know, game rental store, rent the game, and you know, you already have the code, you can just play the demo. What game rental store? They went out of business. Blockbuster, Hollywood Video, all the, the rental places that used to be like in supermarkets and such, they don't exist anymore because all this content is now available on demand, especially movies, and other things like Gamefly, Netflix, put them out of business. So there's literally no fucking way for someone who traded in Dragon's Dogma or maybe gave the game away or whatever to play the demo unless they buy the game again. So Capcom has literally fucked the customer. People who went out and bought this game because they wanted to play the Resident Evil 6 demo and unfortunately I feel bad for them, didn't take the time to read the microscopic fucking fine print here. Oh, oh Capcom, I paid you $60. Now let me sit here and read your fucking microscopic novel because this is what I want to do with my time. Not actually play your fucking game. I want to read this because you think you're so fucking cool and smart and you can fuck the customer. I'm done. I'm done praising this company, at least its managerial structure. Completely shady business practices, no benefit to the customer to do the things the way that they're doing, completely seeking out ways to benefit themselves. Again, by putting the demo, on, not even it's not even on the disc, by making you still have the game disc for Dragon's Dog to play this demo, does two things that benefit Capcom, but fuck the customer, okay? Again, for me, straw that broke the camel's back. Like, I just have no confidence in this company unless, until they make this kind of announcement that they're completely changing their managerial structure and the direction of this company, I'm done. And it's funny because when Dragon's Dogma was released at the end of May, they actually had a press release and they were like, oh, we're so sorry, um, you know, we are, we're going we're gonna to do our best to change, but just so you know, there is DLC already on the Dragon's Dogma disc. It's like, well, fuck you, Capcom, then give it away. You know, if you really actually care about the customer and you want to show we're sorry that we fucked up, then do something to prove it. Say we're sorry. Okay, here's some free content. As a, a, a you know, please forgive us for fucking you with you for so long. I mean, just let's look at Capcom's track record in the past couple years. Repeated sequels to their fighting games that no one asked for, no one wants, and you're forced to buy or else you're playing an outdated version of the game and you can't play the games competitively. DLCs that are already on the disc that you have to pay for. Getting rid of, uh, I, I don't, forgive me because I don't know how to pronounce the name, Inafune, or whoever, the, the originator, the creator of Mega Man, completely fucking over fans of the Mega Man series, telling them it's your fault that they're not making Mega Man Legends 3 because you didn't give them enough good ideas and content ideas to create the game. What? I thought you're the developer. Why the fuck are you blaming the fans for your fuck-ups? You know what I mean? And it hurts me so much because this is a ca company I grew up with. Classic characters. This cast of Street Fighter. Uh, again, Mega Man, one of my favorite gaming series of all time. And I'm probably never going to see another Mega Man game again. And that's unfortunate. But that's Capcom's 
marketing strategy right now is fuck you, we're going to do whatever we want and milk money out of you, and if something isn't a giant money maker, well fuck it, we'll just drop it, we don't care anymore. So I'm just, I'm so fucking upset, I really, I, I see the Angry Joe videos where he's like, Capcom is, is Cobra, you know? They are! It's like, I, I wish I could say something positive about something they've done in the past couple of years. It's all negative. Like, name one business practice they've done that's benefit the customer. There's been zero things. Like, they just don't care. And how can you have a company that, again, one of the best third-party developers in my lifetime, that I grew up with, that I loved, that I cherished, and I'm just completely lost faith in them at this point. That they would do things that completely benefit them, don't benefit the customer at all. There's no workaround. I have Dragon's Dogma on my fucking Xbox 360 hard drive right now, and I cannot play it because you still need the game disc to play it, and you need the game disc to, to trigger the download for the Resident Evil 6 demo. Capcom, let me put it this way, Capcom developers, thank you for putting in the hard work. I actually know from news stories and things that Capcom, unfortunately, overworks their developers. Put, you know, some of them wanted to kill themselves at some point. There were news stories about it. They're abused. They're forced to work hard hours. They're told that they're shit. And this is the, 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 the management mentality over at Capcom. So game developers, thank you for putting out quality games for so long. We, the gamers, actually appreciate the hard work that you put into game development. Capcom management, fuck you. Go to hell, go jump off a fucking bridge, go hook and hang yourself, do Harry Carry, whatever you need to do, because you're killing your own company. Systematically and slowly, you're killing your own company. It's a slow bleed because you have so much money, but you need to stop the bleeding. Now look at the, what, what's happened just in the past several months. <clears throat> the two people who were the main faces of Capcom to the public are gone. Oh no left or left the, the leadership role of sh the, the leadership of the fighting game division he stepped down he said i'm not going to do it anymore now of course there were all these new stories about oh it's for health reasons then all of a sudden he's out promoting street fighter cross tekken so it's like wait a minute no obviously that was a fucking bullshit story for pr he stepped probably stepped down because he knew he couldn't save them at this point with this whole dlc debacle then only a couple months later and this is a new story from the past week it was just announced yesterday seth killian leaves capcom as the community head you know the i forget what his official job role was it was a community manager for america and uh he's left and he went to sony because he wants to do game development so he's moved on. He says, I'm tired of being your fucking PR face for your goddamn company and all your bullshit shady business practices. He wants to move on and develop games. He's now working on PlayStation All-Stars, which is awesome. I think that he's going to add a completely new facet to that game. It might actually be a game where it's Smash Brothers, but it's a little bit more complex than that because it's tournament competitive. I don't know. I, I played the game in E3 and I liked it. It played like Smash Brothers to me, but then again, I've only played it three matches. There may be more complexity to it, but that's cool that he's not going to get to develop games. You know, as a, as a longtime gamer, that would be cool for me too. If I could sit down and brainstorm and develop games, I think that that would be awesome. And that's where he's gotten with his career. So the two people who were like the, the face heads of Capcom to the public, the people who were the talking heads who were like, yes, here's what we're doing, here's our goal, blah, 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 they're gone. So Capcom has no one now. No one to, to, to do PR for them. They're done. Like, there's, that's it. The two positive people that you had are gone. That's, just think about that. What are they going to do now? Who is it that's going to try to explain to us when shit goes wrong what they're going to do? I don't know. But all I know is I've completely lost faith with these fuckers. The management structure needs to be cleaned out. So someone in that company needs to take a fucking broom and just go like this. Take all those fucking people in their fucking business suits that think that they understand the gaming culture and you take a broom and you fucking go, get the fuck out of my building and you put people in place that actually understand how to relate to the customer, what the customer wants, and then you're going to have success in that. You know, back in the 90s, sure, fighting games had a hundred different versions coming out, but during that time period it was okay because it was the arcade owner who took on the cost to continuously buy new versions of the game, and they more than made up for it because people kept plunking quarters into the machines. People were okay with it. Today, repeated releases like they're doing with some of their games don't benefit the customer like they did back then. Same thing with these DLC practices. So that's it. You need management that understands this, business-minded, that understand the culture and how times have changed, and they don't have it. They have this ar must be archaic management structure of a bunch of fucking idiots, and they need to be cleaned out. So that's my rant. I'm done. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of Capcom fucking us over. This was it for me. Like, I could put up with characters on disc. 
for DLC because I just choose not to pay them or not to, to pay for it. You know, I can put up with okay. They came out with Ultimate Marvel three seven months after regular Marvel three because I can just say I choose not to play it. But when I buy your fucking game and you tell me I'm getting a demo and because I didn't read one fucking line of fine print, I've now been fucked and I can't play the demo. Fuck you, management of Capcom. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Look, see what he's doing? Fucking loser. Loser. That's what you are. I'm done with you. I just, I'm not going to support this company anymore in any kind of endeavor besides just playing the games. I'm done. Like, I cannot, I, I want Capcom to come out and do something to prove to us that they're making amends for their fuck ups. That is a fucking huge fuck up. That needs to be fixed. Capcom, fuck you. I'm DSP. I'm fucking really pissed right now, if you can't tell. Sorry that I had to go off on a tangent and a rant like this today. It's not something I normally do, but I wanted to get my opinion and my feelings known. Angry Joe, you were right all along. I, 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 I kind of bow to you at this point. You knew what you were talking about. These guys are fucking assholes. Fuck them to hell. Shove a fucking King Kong dildo up their ass. See you later.